Hello everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Stephanie and I'm here today with two weeks worth of wax melt empties. I have such a variety of stuff here. I have, oh, I sat on them. I have 13 vendors that are just one-offs. So huge variety here. I am going to just get right into it because this is going to be a long one. Buckle up grab a snack, grab some water. I have my water right here because I already know that my voice is going to tire out. So I am going to start with the ones that are not one off. So I'll go ahead and do my Rose Girls first. First was a chunk muffin in Luke's Diner, which is absolute coffee, pumpkin pecan waffles, pancakes, and vanilla crunch donuts. This is amazing. Um, it's a very, very buttery scent because of the pumpkin pecan waffles and the pancakes. It is not heavy, heavy coffee. Coffee is definitely there, but it is not one of those strong, skunky coffee notes. If you really like a desserty, buttery, sweet, creamy, breakfasty type of coffee where it has that pancake, that syrup, that waffle, this is a really good one. I would definitely buy this again. This next one was a mini melter in hot cross buns, which is blackberry jam butter cookies, graham crackers and frosted cinnamon buns. This is one of my favorites from Rose Girls. I have had this blend a couple of times now. I really, really like it because normally with blackberry jam butter cookies, I absolutely love that note, but it is very strong and dominant in a blend. It is a very, very deep, rich blackberry jam with a very buttery cookie. And the way that this one was done, it was actually frosted cinnamon buns. That was the prominent note. That was my experience both times with this blend. And Rose Girls does frosted cinnamon buns really, really well. It's a very rich, doughy cream cheese frosting with a little bit of cinnamon cinnamon bun. Her cinnamon bun is... I, I'm pickier with cinnamon buns and I love hers. And then blackberry jam butter cookies was actually just in the background. So it smelled like this light blackberry buttery cookie flavor along with a very heavy, deep, rich cinnamon bun. Graham crackers in this blend, I've never really been able to put my finger on it, but I absolutely love this one. If you are a fan of blackberry jam butter cookies but you don't always like how dominant it is this is one that i would recommend and then my last rose girls was a mini melter in campfire marshmallow this is one of my favorite scents from rose girls it's so simple it is a single oil but her campfire marshmallow just throws through my house it is so strong and it's very much heavier on the sweet marshmallow with just a little bit of that campfire in the background one of my wax friends and i were talking about the difference between campfire marshmallow and marshmallow fireside and i find campfire marshmallow to be much sweeter than mallow fireside um but this is great to melt plain it's great to melt as a complimentary scent with other scents it is so so strong sweet with a little bit of smoky my favorite campfire marshmallow from any vendor and i definitely would love to have more of this i melted a couple things from that smell good shop this first one is woodsboro palo santo and cream soda this was definitely a wild card for me because of the cream soda. I am not a fizzy soda scent type of melter. It's just not my thing. But I really wanted to try it with Palo Santo because cream soda is also different than Coke or Mountain Dew or Sprite or even Fizzy Pop because it has that cream in there. I'd never smelled a cream soda oil before, but I was curious and I felt like if I liked any type of soda scent, it might be cream soda. This was so interesting. With the Palo Santo, it made it into a very incense smoky type of scent. I didn't get a whole lot of fizz from this, but I definitely got a slight effervescent vanilla cream. I will say this to me was very reminiscent of, you know, those incense brands that have like a billion and one flavors and they have like random flavors of incense. I totally forget the name of that brand. But they have like every flavor under the sun and you're like how do you have strawberry milkshake incense but it does it smells like incense and strawberry this to me smelled like one of those incenses like if they were to have a cream soda one i think they probably do honestly i feel like it would smell exactly like that i enjoyed this it isn't something that i would buy again but i'm glad that i tried this and it certainly was not bad and then i also melted this sample in toasty mallow zucchini 
this was really nice um that smell good shop has a very dry yeasty zucchini bread and it's very strong i love it and this was definitely a much creamier toasty mallow rather than a smoky toasty mallow so this was just a creamy marshmallow zucchini bread it was very very nice from Fantasy Wax, I went through a couple of samples. This first one is Christmas Cabin. This was a blind pull for me because I just didn't know what I wanted to melt in my bathroom, but I ended up really enjoying this. This wasn't overwhelmingly Christmassy at all. It was actually very woodsy. I got a tree, like kind of rich wood scent, almost as if you were like smelling the bark of a tree or like the raw part of a tree without the bark rather than like the leaves it wasn't like pine or anything like that it was just wood and then a little bit of kind of like that winter spice this was great um i do hope that she offers it again closer to the holiday season because i definitely would grab some more of this and then i also melted this sample in cocoa butter cashmere i really like cocoa butter cashmere you know it is a it's a very soapy scent to me. It To me, it smells kind of exactly like the Dove soap that is coconut and cocoa butter. I like it. Um, I like it by itself even more than I tend to like it in blends. This was a couple pieces of cereal and milk from Fantasy Wax Melts. This is her fruity cereal with sweet sugar milk. To me, this just smells like a perfect Fruit Loop scent, but with that added creamy milk, it's definitely there. It's not just straight Fruit Loops. I love this. I um, have this. It's a core scent on her site. It's always available. If you like cereal, this is a great one to have on hand. This was a mini chunk bag of strawberry white cake and zucchini bread, one of my favorite blend combinations of all time. Fantasy Wax Melts does it great. It is a little bit more warm and rich this is a creamier zucchini bread and strawberry white cake a strawberry in this is not a strong overpowering strawberry you can definitely tell it's a strawberry bakery scent but those cake and zucchini bread notes really are in the forefront i love this one um i have a loaf of it coming from her most recent pre-order and i will enjoy it every single time this was a snap bar in monkey bread, vanilla ice cream, and sugar cookie royale. I believe that this was um, an extra from her pre-order that she had before this most recent one that just closed. And I love vanilla ice cream. I think it smells like exactly like a fresh bowl of vanilla ice cream. And her sugar cookie royale is definitely that crunchy, um, you know, like toasted sugar, sugar cookie. And monkey bread is not a scent that I'd ever had before. So I was curious. This was really good. It worked way, way, way better in my small space versus when I tried to open warm it in my open concept. It is definitely more of a small space type of scent. It was just an overall very sweet cookie um, bakery. The monkey bread really just smelled like almost a little bit like the doughiness of a cinnamon bun but with more of a glaze on it rather than a cinnamon like i said really good small room scent this one is special to me because it was one of my blends for the um let's let's blend collection that got voted on and i called it a sweet treat and it is pumpkin pretzel latte bear claws and snickerdoodle I am so happy with how this scent came out. I'm so glad that she made it come to life in the exact way that I imagined it. Pumpkin pretzel latte is not a coffee scent to me. It is definitely more of like a creamer, like a salty sweet with a little bit of like a creamer that you would have in a latte. Bear Claws is that very, very flaky pastry with some cinnamon and then snickerdoodle is of course that doughy cinnamon sugar cookie so i felt like this all kind of had like a little bit of a cinnamon vibe all of these notes going on and i just i felt like they would be good together and i i may be biased but i think that it was great it was a sweet creamy pumpkin not a pumpkin that has a ton of spice to it or that leans very fall and then there was those hints of cinnamon sugar not a spicy cinnamon 
definitely cinnamon sugar and then all of that pastry and bakery i loved it this was duloc or delic i'm not sure how to pronounce it this was blue sh blue sugar pistachio and zucchini bread this was a great super unique scent definitely a creamy pistachio first and then you i would get that blue sugar and blue sugar and pistachio are two notes that i would really never think to blend together but they work really well it's kind of strange strange blue sugar being that almost like a little bit masculine kind of deep sugary musk with such a sweet creamy nutty pistachio it just worked and it kind of blended together and made it into its own thing and then the zucchini bread in this was not super strong could smell it a little bit in the background but it was mainly that pistachio and blue sugar last from fantasy wax melts this is aberforth this was carrot cake oatmeal cookies and butterscotch this was really good. Um, carrot cake and oatmeal cookies are kind of like scent cousins to me. They have that little bit of kind of a cinnamon, but that creamy bakery kind of like, I don't know, they just smell, the two oils, carrot cake and oatmeal cookies, they just smell a little bit similar to me. But butterscotch is that deep, rich, buttery, caramelly, super, super sweet, like those butterscotch candies. It's a very, very rich scent. Butterscotch is one of those polarizing scents. I feel like you either kind of love it or it turns your stomach a little bit. Personally love it. And I felt like it added a lot to that more dry bakery that is oatmeal cookies and carrot cake. This just was a really good, well-balanced scent. Very sweet, but that butterscotch was not too, too much. Really enjoyed this one. From L3, I finished two little mini scoop samples. The first one is Lavender and Don't Cross Dreams. I know that Don't Cross Dreams is a vanilla bakery blend with vanilla ice cream, maybe marshmallow and something else, but it is a very, very creamy vanilla bakery blend. It is not even really bakery because I don't think there's any cookies or cake in Don't Cross Dreams. It's straight just like vanilla creamy with that lavender. Oh, this was to die for. Lavender Don't Cross Dreams, definitely something that I would request again. It, it just blended so, so, so beautifully. And it was a sweet, rich, creamy vanilla lavender. This one is Pretzel Bakery Bomb. I've spoken before about, you know, my pretzel journey and how I'm not typically the biggest fan of pretzel and wax, but there are some times when I do like it and it's done well. In this, I felt like it was good. It was one of those things where when pretzel just adds a little bit of saltiness, I am here for it. I don't know what's in l3's bakery bomb it's one of their secret blends but it is just a ton of bakery i find it to be more of a bready bakery rather than a cakey or a cookie and then with a little bit of the saltiness of that pretzel this was just like a very 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 deep sweet bready pretzel i use this in my accord warmer as i like to do with lots of scoops and it did great in my kitchen this sample was biolage and charcoal and tonka I loved this. Biolage is that kind of generic high-end salon shampoo smell and then the charcoal and tonka just added this earthiness, herbalness, a little bit of sweet to it. It really toned down that shampoo soapy edge that Biolage has and it was just, it was really good. It was great body care. Unique scent would definitely grab this again. This one was a sample in just plain white cake. I was really curious to see how this did on its own. It was a light one. It was just a very, very light vanilla cake scent. I love white cake. It just does better in blends. It just does. It needs notes to complement it, to make it shine. And um, I used this in an alternating warmer with something else. I don't remember what, so I was able to appreciate it. But I just know this is not something that I would melt on its own. This was, I put a spell on you, which is a cinnamon sugar bakery. And I know that in the notes of this, there is a note that says not a spicy cinnamon. That is very, very true. This to me is a cinnamon sugar pastry. Um, I loved it. I felt like I... I hadn't tried it before in this sample and it wasn't something that ever really spoke to me when I would see it on lists but um, I've come to really appreciate it and it's something that I would like to get a little bit more of before L3 closes. This one here is sugar cakes and I'm not going to show the um, description because it's wrong. Sugar cakes is it's a vanilla buttercream frosting vanilla wafer 
cookie cake scent and it is a very 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 heavy rich deep vanilla i love sugar cakes i will say i feel like it can be i don't know what it is it can be a little inconsistent sometimes to me sugar cakes is very strong sometimes to me it's a little bit of a lighter throw it's a little bit strange but um, this one was good. It was a heavy vanilla bakery. Like I said, I used it complimentary with something else in another warmer and um, it was fine. Like I said, this is another one where it just needs to be in blends and I really enjoy it. This one was Italian wedding cake, almond macaroon, vanilla frosting, strawberry jam, and pie crust. L3's strawberry jam is a very, very dominant strawberry note. I feel like you either love it or you hate it. For me, it is the perfect strawberry because it is not overwhelmingly sweet. It really is like smelling um, like a thing of strawberry jam. It's very rich, it's very deep, it has a tartness to it. It is not just overwhelmingly sweet. And added with all of this bakery, to me, it really, really smelled like what I think a wedding cake that would be layered with strawberry jam would be like and I loved it because that is like my dream wedding cake is like a bunch of vanilla or coconut and then a little bit of strawberry jam in it so I love this it made me happy I would definitely get more of it this one was lavender cream boom boom and coconut coast man I fell in love with this and it actually caused me to go make another l3 order last night I know I don't want to hear about it because I know that this was still available and I skipped it because I didn't get a chance to melt the sample before I had placed my order. But I melted it and I immediately fell in love. It is the perfect, perfect blend of these. Boom Boom can often really overpower a blend. It's that Sol de Janeiro type. It doesn't in this blend, it doesn't. It's just this hint of Boom Boom and it's mainly just that lavender and coconut with that hint of Boom Boom back there. It made me want to try more lavender and Boom Boom blends. This was gorgeous. I melted it in our bedroom and it was fantastic. I now have a loaf coming, which is great news. This one here is Nordic Night. I could not find the notes for this for the life of me, but this was a really, really, really strong atmospheric smoky woodsy scent that's really the best way that i can describe it my girlfriend and i both loved it but it was too strong i had put this was like two little mini circles and i put one in our bedroom and one in the adjoining bathroom and we had to turn one of them off because we loved the scent but it was just too much it had that mountain air that woodsiness that freshness i love scents like that i would love to know what this is i'm gonna do a little more research on it and if i can find it i will put it here because this was great and then last sample here is just plain strawberry pound cake this is the l3 type strawberry pound cake not the bath and body Works strawberry pound cake and i know that there are some people who prefer one over the other or whatever i like both of them but i will say melting this on its own i could really identify the differences and this is such a buttery strawberry pound cake it's a very 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 buttery so i can see why it's a little off-putting to some people it was very strong and it was nice in my bathroom and i still love the l3 strawberry pound cake but i think if i were to be melting a strawberry pound cake on its own it probably would be more so the bath and body works one this was glazed donuts berry waffle cone and strawberry pound cake i really really liked the way that this was done because it's glazed donuts and not jelly donuts it's glazed donuts with some berry notes added to it and so this made this blended together and made like the perfect jelly donut to me because lots of jelly donuts can be heavy on the raspberry and just i don't know but the way that the berry waffle cone and the strawberry pound cake blended with the glazed donuts to me it made what i always want a jelly donut oil to smell like i loved this highly recommend this one here is snooze button with white elephant exchange snooze button is a lavender butter mints blend and most of the time with snooze button i am mainly smell that overpowering butter mint the lavender is very very light in snooze button to me and white elephant exchange is that powdered donut bakery blend from l3 this smelled like butter mint and powdered donuts with the actual tiniest little, little hint of lavender. 
I liked this because I love that powdered donut note. The mint wasn't too overwhelming, but I would so love for this to be a lavender dominant blend. And I think I'm just gonna have to end up doing lavender with white elephant exchange on its own and just take out that butter mint because it just, it's not my favorite, but I enjoyed the time that I had with this. This one was vanilla birch, sugar cookie royale, and zucchini bread. I've talked about this a million times. This is a very, very strong, dry, rich bakery blend. The vanilla birch in this does not pull tree at all. I don't know what it is. The tree note is like canceled out in this blend. It's the weirdest thing. It just, just adds a little bit more depth and smokiness to the zucchini bread and sugar cookie royale. This is a go-to bakery blend for me. It's extremely strong. I still have a ton of it in my collection and I'll just never get sick of it. This one was Night at the Carnival. This is kettle corn, cupcakes at Tiffany's, vanilla butter fudge, and zucchini bread. I know that Tam made this blend. I think that she made it last year. Tam, if you're watching this, this was amazing. I absolutely loved this. You can definitely tell, smell the saltiness of the kettle corn front and center. I know someone asked recently on the L3 page, is this a kettle corn forward blend? Yes, it absolutely is. But vanilla butter fudge is such a sweet, rich, buttery, buttery, buttery scent. And the Cupcakes of Tiffany's is also very sweet. It has that toffee note. Um, and those two add such a creamy sweetness to that kettle corn. And then you have that base of the zucchini bread behind it. It is just so, so good. It has all of the elements to make each of these notes really shine with and complement each other without taking away from anything. Um, very, very impressed. Love this blend. This one was pistachio, sugar cookie, vanilla butter fudge, and zucchini bread. This was good. I like just the plain pistachio oil, I will say. Adding the vanilla butter fudge to this made it a little bit more of a pistachio pudding cake vibe. Um, I did like the addition of the zucchini bread in here, adding that dry base so that it wasn't too just like buttery, gooey pistachio. It had a little bit more of a dryness to it. I enjoyed this. I just think I would prefer it without the vanilla butter fudge. This one is Cafe C Spiced Oat Milk. Um, this was my first time trying and finishing this blend. I know that everybody, everybody, their mom, their sister, their brother, their cousin, and their aunt all absolutely adore this scent. And I get why. It's really, really good. Spiced oat milk is super, super, super creamy. Cafe C, this to me, I don't know if it's just the blend or if it's that coffee oil. This was barely a coffee scent. Like this mainly smelled more actually like a super, super creamy coffee ice cream. I think for people who aren't big on coffee and just want a little bit of that hint, a little bit of that flavor, that this one is great, but it is definitely more of that spiced oat milk dominant. It almost smelled a little bit like serendipity with just like the tiniest hint of a coffee or coffee ice cream. I enjoyed this blend. It was really good while it lasted. I am not going feral over it like everyone else is, and that's totally fine. Um, it wasn't bad. It's really good. It is just not my number one as far as coffee blends go. This is one that I had to rebag just because the bag got so messed up, but this is Leviosa, which is apple cider, leaves, and spice. Now, this is one of her Harry Potter blends, and she also has this Season of the Witch, which is her their, um, you know, bestseller apples and leaves blend. I've actually never tried Season of the Witch by itself. I have a Season of the Witch blend that came to me in the mail a few days ago. However, it's blended with something else and I'm not sure if I'm really able to get the Season of the Witch vibe, we'll see. But the reason why I like this is because it's apple cider rather than a fresh apple or a mac apple. My girlfriend is not a big fresh apple or mac apple person. But apple cider, she doesn't seem to complain about. Mixed with the leaves and the spice, this is just like the, to me, this is the perfect apple and leaves blend. Like, I don't know, Season of the Witch, I know people love it. I'm excited to try it on its own. I would really, really like to. But this, this apple cider leaf spice, this is all I need for apples and leaves, honestly. I highly recommend giving it a try if you haven't. Last from L3, I'm already losing my voice and the video is already 28 minutes long. And I still have all of these, oh my gosh, I'm not even done 
Like, I'm not even to the one-offs yet. But it's okay. I'll take a little bit of a water break after this. This is pumpkin pecan waffles, mallow fireside, and zucchini bread. I really, really grew to love this scent. When I first got it, I was disappointed when I smelled it on cold because I was hoping for a zucchini bread dominant scent and all I could smell was pumpkin pecan waffles. And I let this sit for like, probably like four months before I opened it again and smelled it and melted it. And when I opened it again and smelled it, it still really was mostly pumpkin pecan waffles dominant, but I could smell the other two notes a little bit in the background. But then when I put this in my warmers, I just fell in love with this scent. And this is how it really goes to show you cannot judge a scent on cold because even though on warm, this was still very pumpkin pecan waffles dominant with that heavy buttery pumpkin pecan waffle. I could smell the mallow fireside and I could smell a little hint of that zucchini bread, but oh my gosh, on warm, it was just so so good i feel like pumpkin pecan waffles you know sometimes i smell it on cold and i forget just how much i like it on warm so this one was great pumpkin pecan waffles dominant but very very good all right water break hydrate with me all right let's keep it rolling so this is twilight garden wax I got a bunch of Twilight Garden Wax in my last round robin box that I didn't open on camera, but I started one of the most recent ones, and when it comes back to me, I'm gonna open it on camera and show everything that came back and like the stuff of mine that went around and people didn't take and whatever, and that'll be fun. But I got a bunch of Twilight Garden, so the first is Pink Sugar Cookies. Delicious blend of pink sugar and buttery sugar cookies. So this scent, this scent was really nice. It was very gentle, soft. A lot of times, certain vendors, pink sugar can be like, woof, like overpowering, strong throw, which I love, I love pink sugar. This one was definitely a little lighter, definitely heavier on the cookie, but it was soft, it was gentle, it lingered in the room. You could detect it the whole time. It was very pretty. It just wasn't blowing the house down, but that's fine, it was long lasting and I could always smell it in the air, which is all I can ask for, you know, a lot of the time. This was cashmere rose, a blend of rose, vanilla, cashmere, coconut, cocoa butter, florals, woods, amber, and musk. I absolutely loved this. To me, this smelled like rose petals in a milk bath. It was just so gentle, creamy, warm, milky, with some fresh rose drenched in these like body care notes. This was gorgeous. Through strong, through long, but it wasn't that harsh, dominating, overpowering, fresh floral rose. It really was these like milk drenched rose petals and it was really, really pretty. And then this was Caramel Sunday. And this was straight up super gooey, sweet caramel sauce. Loved it. I don't know the other notes that are in this. I'm guessing it is an ice cream note due to the sundae. But this to me just smelled like straight up fresh caramel sauce. And I loved it through long and strong again. I'm really enjoying everything that I've gotten from Twilight Garden and it is definitely a vendor that I would um, order from in the future. All right, now we're on to attack of the one-offs. So I am just going to pull and go. So this first one is a sample from CQ Handcrafted Wax Melts. This is S'mores by the Ocean. This is Anya's company. She is Wickless by Curly Q on um, YouTube. And um, her Facebook group, I think, though, is the CQ Handcrafted Wax Melts. I was absolutely impressed with this. This threw for like 15 hours in my bathroom. And I am very picky with like beachy s'mores, oceany scents. But this was great because it was mainly salty sea air as the dominant note. But I could smell that graham cracker, that marshmallow, and even that a hint of that like toasted chocolate, the little smoke in that salty sea air. This was fantastic. Highly, highly recommend if you like beachy scents like that. This was from the Starlit Corner. This was Fruity Pebbles and Marshmallow. For a cereal scent, this was very, very light, but sometimes like cereal scents don't need to blow the house down for me to like them, especially because my girlfriend does like cereal scents, but she does like the ones that are more 
toned down and subdued. This was better in like the bathroom and my office it was a very nice, light, gentle cereal, but not quite strong enough for open space. This was Destination Wax Marshmallow Fireside, Sweet Marshmallows and Smoldering Embers, Bath and Body Works type. This says it's not smoky, but it was, a, it was smoky to me, but oh my gosh, I loved this. I loved this. This was an amazing marshmallow fireside. I cut this in half, put one half of the sample in our bedroom, the other one in our adjoining bathroom, and the entire space just smelled like gorgeous, smoky marshmallow. Loved it. Um, I definitely would like to grab some more from Destination Wax in the future. This was the first thing I melted from them, and if a simple scent like Marshmallow Fireside that can come off so light from a lot of vendors is impressing me this much, I definitely want to have my eye out for this vendor. This was Vanilla Cotton Aromas Circus Animal Cookies. Um, this was very, very light. I mainly just got a very, very light kind of sweet vanilla off of this. Um, I did not get the best performance, but I do have a couple of other scents from this vendor that I got from the second round robin box that you saw me open. And I've melted a couple of those. I just haven't finished them and I am getting much better performance from those scents. I just think that animal cookies playing is hard to do in general, but this was in the shape of like real frosted animal cookies and it, they really looked like real food. It, I, they were really pretty to watch melt, I will say that. This was Glitterati raspberry mousse blueberry cheesecake and fruity pebbles i took like two pieces out of a like big chunk of this from the round robin box just so i could try it once because this was a total wild card for me because of the raspberry mousse i am not a big fan of raspberry mousse but on cold this mainly smelled like fruity pebbles so i was just curious on warm i was unfortunately not a fan of this i could really just only smell that very harsh kind of florally raspberry mousse the blueberry wasn't my favorite I don't know this one just did not work for me but that's why I only took two pieces of it I just wanted to try it I didn't really think that I was gonna love it but I'm glad that I got the opportunity to try it because you never know sometimes those wild cards are like your new best friend this is super tarts Casper toasted mallow vanilla bean noel cornbread and Mexican fried ice cream thank you so much to the person who ex uh, let me know in my super tarts haul that this scent casper actually is the same as the scent boo that i hauled because i remember i was saying i cannot figure out the difference between these two they told me that um boo is just this renamed so it was the same this was gorgeous i was super sweet very dense it, i can smell that mexican fried ice cream it's really crazy that note is so prominent if you've ever smelled fresh mexican fried ice cream really smells exactly like that. I like this cornbread because it's a very creamy cornbread. I think the vanilla bean Noel helped with that as well. This was just a really pretty sweet bakery. This was a clamshell from the bathing garden, Valentine shortbread. This was almond crusted Bing cherries, don't know what that is, blended with vanilla shortbread, coconut tonka beans, and frosted sugar cookies. I absolutely loved, loved, loved this. I wasn't sure how I was gonna feel because cherry is like 98% of the time I don't like it and 2% of the time I like it. But in this case, I really liked it because this mainly smelled like that almond vanilla shortbread. It smelled like a very shortbready cookie with that dough, pastry, and then just this like little, little, little hint of a genuine true cherry fruit in the background. It wasn't that like uber sweet like maraschino cherry or that like turn off medicinal cherry. It was nice. I liked this. I like shortbready scents like that with the almond. This was from Dessa's Homespun Scents, Key Lime Strawberry Cookies, Key Lime Custard, Strawberry Pound Cake, and Sugar Cookies. Again, huge wild card for me here, but this is one that I ended up absolutely falling in love with. So key lime, I am not the biggest key lime fan, but this is key lime custard and it really, I could tell because it just smelled like a very, very creamy, 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 gentle lime. The way that this blended with the strawberry pound cake and the sugar cookies on warm, this almost had a, a bakery cereal vibe. 
I don't know what it was because like I said, keen lime is not my thing normally, but I was obsessed with this and I would definitely buy more. I got this in a mystery bag. I would never try this myself. And this is one of those wild cards that became a new best friend. Dessa's also just works like freaking amazingly in my home and I've only been able to try a few things from D-Stashes. I cannot wait until she is pouring again. I am definitely going to try some new things from her because all of her wax has just done so great for me. This was Broadway Wax, You're Never Fully Dressed Without a Smile, Pink Chiffon, Vanilla Lace, and then this is Palo Santa, but I think it's Palo Santo. And this was just a very, very, very smoky, smoky body care scent. Her Polo is a very smoky Polo Broadway wax. And her pink chiffon too is that like very musky pink chiffon. I feel like there's a more fruity pink chiffon and a more musky pink chiffon. Um, and also because of the vanilla lace there, this was just straight like musky musk, musky smoke. I liked it. I like musk, um, but I don't know. There's almost actually like started to lean a little more masculine, which is so strange for pink chiffon. Um, this one was interesting. It, it wasn't my favorite way that these notes have been blended, but it certainly was not bad. This was something that I got in a D-stash. Sassy Girl Aroma, Black Cat, Blackberry, Cider Lane, and Marshmallow Fireside. I, again, not normally a back Blackberry person, huge, huge wild card. But when I smelled this on cold, I really could smell that fire, that smoke from that marshmallow fireside. And when you add smoke or anything like that to blackberry, that's when I start to like it, like blackberry with Palo Santo or things like that. And it was giving that vibe, but the cider lane, something about the cider lane, it didn't smell like that traditional craft store cider lane. It kind of smelled like a realistic kind of spiced apple cider and the blackberry and the smokiness. I don't know. It just did something the way that these combined together. It smelled like nothing I've really ever smelled before. It was Sassy Girl Aroma. So obviously I got amazing performance. There's never been a time where I haven't. It's kind of just a given, but I have never enjoyed blackberry in this way before. And it's kind of opened my mind to maybe different blackberry combos, but I really, really liked this one. I will definitely grab this if she pours it again once she opens. This was Beach Party from Vintage Chic. I don't know why. I must have gotten a little bit of water on the label because it's very blurry. This is mango and coconut cream. I've talked before about, you know, my kind of mid performance that I get from Vintage Chic, but this one did well and this was a great mango. It was very much like that creamy, creamy coconut cream. It just a little hint of mango. It kind of smelled like if they still made cream savers, like if there was a mango flavor, I feel like it would smell like this. This one I did get good throw from and I enjoyed melting this. Um, it was a good mango scent. This was the Pharmacist's Daughter Revive. Peach, Raspberry, Orange Blossom, Egyptian Musk, and Patchouli. So this is one of those scents where it has all these fruity notes and I would think that I don't like it, but it has musk and patchouli in it, which is like very smoky, incense-y. And so the peach and raspberry and orange in here, it didn't smell like fresh fruit. It smelled like these kind of fruit notes or undertones that were just slightly complementing this really, really deep, rich, Egyptian musk, patchouli, incense-y, natural body care. And it, this was phenomenal. This was phenomenal. I would love to have this in a perfume. This was a great scent and I would definitely, definitely buy this again. And I am finally down to my last thing. We are at 43 minutes. Oh my gosh. This has been a, I think my longest empties yet. Last but not least, this is Mrs. Teddy Bear from Teddy Bees. And I have the description pulled up here and I'm going to read it because I have... First of all, I have to, I owe this scent an apology. This is Teddy Bear Biscuits, Cherry Pie Filling and Whipped Cream. This scent, I had this sample shot cup for a whole year and a half, probably now at this point. I think I got it in March of 2023. When I got it, legit smelled like nothing. Then it was offered during this pre-order and I thought that I had melted it already and that it 
also smelled like nothing. So I was like telling people that it smelled like nothing. And then I saw it in my collection and I was like, holy shit, like I didn't melt it yet. And I'm like telling people like it's not good. Like I felt so guilty, right? And, oops, but I was like, you know what? But I could still, I could still melt it and it might not smell good. But I, and I smelled it after I found it and I was like, oh, like it still smells like nothing on cold. So I don't feel as bad anymore. But then I was like, you know what? But let me melt it because it was the day of the melting challenge that was melt a scent you've had for over a year and I had just found this. I put it on warm in my office warmers. I have two, cut this little sample into two. This, it smelled like nothing on cold. Can I just reiterate that again? That it smelled like nothing? This made my entire house smell like warm, freshly out of the oven biscuits with just this light, light fruit filling. Hello, this was so good. This was so good. I so regret talking shit about this because I didn't know. And if you smell this on cold and it smells like nothing, it's just playing hard to get, okay? Put it in the warmer. Put it in the warmer, it smelled like fresh out of the oven biscuits. It bumped through my whole house. Teddy Bees is crazy. Teddy Bees can smell like nothing on cold and then be insane on warm. It can also smell extremely strong on cold and then not perform. It is just like Teddy Bees is like an experience. And when Teddy Bees is good, oh my God, Teddy Bees is great. So if I warned you against buying Mrs. Teddy Bear, I really apologize and I recommend picking some up in the RTS because it was good. Oh boy, that is everything. That is everything for my two weeks worth of wax belt empties. If you've watched this entire video and stuck with me, thank you so much. I was going to film an L3 haul right after this, but my voice is tired. So that will be coming soon, but I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one.